So we're here at the birthplace of Thorium, the GSI, the Institute in Darmstadt, where the ions of this element were first made. Behind me and all along is the accelerator where the ions were accelerated to make atoms of this element. First of all, this machine can accelerate any ion you want. And so the idea when you're trying to make an element is you take something like lead, which is quite a heavy nucleus, and you bang into it the nucleus with the atomic number that will add up to what you want. So in this case of borium, we want element 107. And we accelerate them together, and where they hit, every so often, once every few days, you make an atom of the element you want. And borium was the first of these super heavy elements to be made here in Germany, in Darmstadt. There's some isotopes, some versions of the nucleus. Different versions of the nucleus can have different numbers of neutrons, always the same number of protons. The, the shortest lived one is only 12 milliseconds. That's a very short amount of time. But the other one is, has a lifetime of 17 seconds. Somebody who was a better runner than me could run the length of this accelerator, all 120 meters, much quicker than that. Once it was made, there was an argument about what they should call of it. The scientist here wanted to name it after Niels Bohr, the famous Danish physicist, who was the first one who produced a nice structure for the atom, how it was made with a nucleus, with electrons going around in quantized orbits. And the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry which decides on the names and says whether you can have it or not, said you couldn't call it Niels Borium because never before had people used the Christian name of a scientist as well as their surname. But the scientist said, here said, well, Borium sounds rather like Boron and people might get muddled. So it was decided, let's let the Danish scientists vote. And they voted for Borium. Niels Bohr was very famous for many of his predictions. He worked out or predicted that there would only be about 100 elements in the periodic table. And it was based on the idea that as you put more and more protons, positively charged particles, into the nucleus of an atom, it will get more and more unstable. And he reckoned that round about 100 was where it would become completely unstable. And it was not a bad guess. When Niels Bohr got his Nobel Prize, there was great celebration in Denmark. And the Carlsberg Brewery gave him a house next door to the brewery with a pipe coming through the wall so he could have beer whenever he wanted. There's still a question with this name, Boron and Borium, because what happens when you start having the salts? of these because borate and borate sounds just the same. Nobody hears the H when you say it. So it's been decided that the salts of borium will be called boreates rather than borate so that people won't be confused. Now you may say that's silly because how can you do chemistry on things that are short-lived? And it turns out that if an atom lives for as short a time as one second, you can already start doing chemistry. And in the case of borium, that they have done some chemistry reacting with oxygen and chlorine and have observed the behavior of what is the oxychloride of borium and shown that it really fits into the group of the periodic table where we want to put it.